Praise the Lord, everyone. If you feel blessed, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Nothing like recovering after an illness. Amen. Things get back to normal. Bless God. A scripture reading this morning is going to be found in the book of Acts. Praise God. Beginning with verse 17. And we're going to receive a special request of prayer you might have at this time. Amen. God is willing to hear our petitions. Okay. Amen. Pray for your dad to get better. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's going to, God hears that. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. I remember one time I had a fever. I don't know if my daughter Diana was the only one in the house or not that day, but she said, Dad, you want me to pray for you? And I'm saying, mm, you're not the owner of the church. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> She laid hands on me and prayed for me, and that fever went away. Bless the name of the Lord. And the key is love. If you love somebody, you want them to feel better. Amen? Amen. And you're willing to go to God for help for the person you love. Yeah. Amen. Any more special requests of prayer this morning? Amen. Saw pictures. Do I talk to David? Amen. Any more special requests this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do want to be mindful of those who are still traveling to the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. And those who won't be able to come for one reason or another. Want to be mindful of those that are in hospitals and nursing homes and rehab centers and mental institutions and uh, some are in hospice amen just hanging in there want to be mindful of those that are in jails and in prisons and any type of incarceration want to continue to pray for the body of christ amen there are god has more people than the people in saint joseph doesn't he bless the name of the lord I continue to pray for our bishop once again, our pastor, our first lady, the ministry here at Greater Jesus Tabernacle, amen, and for you as the people of God. And those requests, amen, that were made at other times, we're, we're still praying for those things also because we believe, amen, in praying until we get the result. Is that all right? So those of you who can, we're going to be reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with verse 17. And those of you who can, I'm going to ask that you please stand with us as we read the word of God. Acts 2, beginning with verse 17, the word of the Lord says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Verse 18. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be <coughs> excuse me, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call 
on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pain of death, because it was not possible that it should be holden of it. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. They put him to death, but death could not hold him. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Father in heaven, God, we, we thank you for blessing us to be here today, Lord, on what we are calling this Resurrection Sunday morning. God, because we are celebrating, hallelujah, that death could not hold you down. You declared that no man took your life, but you had the power to lay it down and you had the power to take it up again. God, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We say thank you for dying for the sins of the world. Thank you for being buried. Thank you for raising from the dead on the third day, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Oh God, you said we could come boldly before the throne of grace. That we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Father, you've heard our petitions this morning. But God, there is so much more to pray about than what we can think of. So Lord God, we just let you receive it all this morning and ask God that you work it all out. Hallelujah. You declare that you can work things out for our good. Hallelujah. We're putting our trust in you. We're acknowledging you today and asking that you direct our path. Bless the service this morning, Lord God. Let your spirit just feel this place. And oh God, we're asking that you just have your way this morning. Bless God, we pray as we sing songs of praise, as we worship. And God, we're praying that you bless the preached word of God today, uh, that somebody might hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. In Jesus' name, we pray. May the heart say amen. God bless you. Let's give him a hand of praise and a hallelujah praise this morning. Of a God truly.
know exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. He is able to do it. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah.
yourselves. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God, amen, asked his people one day, he said, amen, Lord. After all he had done for Israel, he asked him the question, will a man rob God? <laughs> they had been slacking on what God had asked them to do. So they, they told God, they said, wherein have we robbed thee? We would never do something like that. He said, you have robbed me in your time and in your offering. If you like an envelope this morning, just raise your hand. We'll provide you with an offering envelope. It's not necessary. <clears throat> but if you like one, we'll provide you with an envelope. Hallelujah. So God told his people, he said, you have robbed me in your tithe and in your offering. I have been blessing you. And I ask you to bring your tithes at the tribe of Levi. Amen. Might have something to eat. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it says, bring your tithes and your offering into my storehouse that there might be meat for my people. And he says, see, Lord, I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing where there's not enough room to receive it. Amen. Bless God. We're going to give you some time to prepare yourselves and then we're going to then ask you to bring your offering to the offering basket. Amen. So none of you have an offering this morning. We're going to ask that you please stand and just come forward. Bless the name of the Lord. The Bible said bring your tithes and your offering. So just bring it this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Knowing that whatever we give, He's going to give it back to us. Press down, shake it together, and run it over when He gives unto your book. Hallelujah. God is true to His word. Glory to God. Lord Jesus, Father in heaven, we give thanks for the tithe and for the offering we received on this day. We ask you, God, bless those who had something to give and those that didn't have anything to give. But God, in the name of Jesus, multiply this amount like only you can that the work might be completed here at Greater Jesus Tabernacle. And God, we give you praise, our and glory. And as you increase our faith, we're going to increase our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Every heart say amen. God bless you. God bless you.
you. If somebody actually laid down his life, somebody stood up. If somebody actually laid down his life for you, you would cherish that person in that moment, right? But he didn't stay down. He laid down his life and he rose up so we can get up.
there shall be light in your endeavors in the will of God. Amen. So grab their hand as we get ready to pray for them and say, pass quickly. Pass quickly. Pass over my sins. Oh, Lord Jesus, we ask you, Lord. We ask for your spirit of your resurrection, your gospel. And your word is the death, burial, and the resurrection. And we're not ashamed of it. We thank you, Lord, for the celebration of your life. Somebody said it's not a good Friday because it was excruciating pain. You went through torture, mockery. But, Lord, you did it for us so that you can rise again on the third day. Lord Jesus, there's good news in this gospel. Out of a bad thing comes good news. Out of hate comes love because love conquers all. And love is before hate. Goodness is before wickedness. Because you was there in the beginning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've ordained this day. You've ordained this minute, this time, this hour for me to find salvation in your death, in your life, your death, your burial, and your resurrection. You designed this day right now that I might serve you, that I might increase in knowledge and decrease, that you might increase in me in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your power. You can't get out of the grave unless you got power, Lord. Thank you for giving us power after the Holy Ghost come upon us. Thank you for the strength, the power, supernatural, above all, to conquer all. Because you're in all. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the victory this morning. And that the continuation of our faith be increased and continue and not cease. In the name of Jesus, somebody said, get the glory, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Thank God for the praise and worship team. Thank God for First Lady Roberta Foster, who just had a big old birthday. Amen. Big old birthday. And that was awesome. And uh, so we took time to do what we had to do. And then Friday came. And I think I'm still wore out from Friday and then Saturday. All the extracurricular things that I tried to do and tried to uh, get done. But we thank God for this Sunday that you call Easter, <laughs> which is Eostre or Ostre. And the celebration in its originality foundation comes from the Jesus raising from the dead. Amen. After the certain moon cycle, they know about the day and the weekend, the year that it is. It ain't quite like Christmas when we don't know when he was born. Amen. They got it about pinpointed to this time. Amen. Even though after Jesus died, buried, rose again, about a hundred something years later, they say that they start going by a different type of Jewish calendar. So there might be some difference in days. John said it was Thursday. Amen. 14. And the other gospel synoptics, they say it was the 15th, which have been Friday. Amen. So they say they may have interpreted a word I can't pronounce a little bit different with one of the translations. Or the calendar, uh, John wrote his later. Uh, so the calendar was a little bit different that they went by. But we know he was in the grave. However, you turn it around. However, we interpret it. He was in, died, buried, and rose again in how many days? Three days. You can say it was the end of Thursday, the very beginning of Friday. As you know, when the sun went down, they started their days there in the Jewish tradition. Uh, but either way you put it, he was dead, buried, and in the grave three days. And you know when you go to the courthouse and there's a trial, they picked me to be on the jury one time and they, I didn't make the cut. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, they pick all the jury and then they bring, after you get the jury and they decide to bring it to trial, there's witnesses. Witnesses. 
witnesses. Well, if you was trying to prove that there was a Jesus, that there is a Jesus, and that he lives, the lawyer for the proof, you would think, would be having a field day. Because there is a plethora, a number of witnesses to witness of a man named Jesus. There's even a man called Josephus that wrote about the accounts of Jesus. Witnesses, witnesses. And even though we did not see him as he lived in the flesh, can you wave your hand if you a witness of who God is right now? I'm a witness of what he's done in my life. I would not be here if he had not intervened on my behalf. Hallelujah. I would not be here. Amen. I, I like to allude and go back to Psalms because Psalms uh, tell you colorfully how it goes. But Marvin Sapp said, I never would have made it without you. Do you feel like that when you think about Jesus and all that he's done for you, that you never would have made it? Matter of fact, you shouldn't have made it. There's no reason why you should be why you should be here, except that God wants you to be a living testimony. My Bible says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable service. So Jesus presented a living flesh. God in the flesh. Emmanuel, like Elder Hughes so eloquently said Friday. Emmanuel, God with us. Present him in the flesh. A living sacrifice. And the Bible says we are lively stones. And he died, but he didn't die in the spirit. You can't kill God. Amen. You can only take his life in the flesh if he lets you. Amen. Now think about how the devil tried to put his hands on you. How the devil tried to take you out. How the devil tried and meant ill intent for you and harm for you. But God would not let it be. And if I even die, I'm still going to serve him. If my time comes to an end, I'm still going to worship him. Passover. Pass quickly. Lord, pass over my sins. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. Let me give you some history and we'll go home and you can eat all your uh, Resurrection Sunday dinner, all that good stuff you want to do. Uh, uh, Easter, uh, they ain't going to go into the history that much, but uh, they got the word from Greek and from the gods and, and from, from, from the, the origin that is not biblical. That's why us biblical students, we say Resurrection Sunday. Ain't that right? That's all right. It's a holiday. You call it Easter. I call it Resurrection Sunday. Same day should be the same God. And God gets the glory. In the Bible, if the Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love him, maybe a few words that you use and that I use, the origin isn't quite bright. But it worked together for the good. As long as you study to show yourself approved. Hallelujah. But the history and, and, and is the unleavened bread. And the history of the feast of the Passover. The feast of unleavened bread was seven days. And the Passover was, I believe, the beginning of it. It came from Genesis. No, no, no. It came from Exodus. But let's take a detour. Because... Uh, when Jesus died for our sins, hallelujah, he came up out of that grave at a design time on time. Can't nothing stop him. When he comes back for us and he cracks the clouds, he's going to come swiftly in the moment in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. But the feast of the Passover, the unleavened bread. Now, the devil, hallelujah, I think it's important to know in, with the Feast of the Passover that 
uh, they was told to cook unleavened bread in the book of uh, Exodus. They was told to bake unleavened bread. So the origin comes from the feast of unleavened bread. And the reason why, because they was exiting out of Egypt when God brought the final miracle, which was a plague, uh, the execution of the firstborn. And when you see, when he see the blood, the death angel, he'll pass over you. Amen. But they said, cook unleavened bread so you can get out fast. Look at somebody. Tell yourself, get out fast. Get away from the devil fast. Leave your worries behind. The Bible says to cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. I don't know anybody that casts when they're fishing like this. Let me take my time. And, and you might be out there for leisure. You might be all out there all day. But you cast your cares. You swiftly cast your cares. So a little bit of history. Genesis, Genesis 39 and 7. It says it came to pass after these things. His master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And then she said lie with me. He refused. I'm talking about Joseph in Egypt. He refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wanteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath in my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. He basically said, My master's done everything to me. Why should I lie with you and sin against God? Why should I commit wickedness against my God? And it came to pass as she spoke to Joseph day by day. She was always trying to get Joseph. And like, like Delilah and Samson, she was always trying to get something out of him. She spoke to him day by day. And he hearkened not to her to lie with her or to be with her. It came to pass at this time. Joseph went into the house. She caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand. And fled and got him out. When you are getting away from the adversary, from evil, you might not run, you might fight, you might pray, but whatever it is, do it quickly. The Bible said he fled. He fled. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. He fled. Flee means to run swiftly. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Two can't walk together except they agree. Somebody gonna run from somebody. But if you run, you gonna run in with power, with the vision, with the protection of God. And resist that devil. He gonna run from you. But flee. Pass over. Flee. Swiftly. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, Exodus 4 and 5, 14 and 5 says, And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go serving from serving us? The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them. They pursued all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and kept them by the sea beside pi before Baal-Zephon. Hallelujah. So the people fled after the people of God. More fleeing. Get behind me, Satan. Uh, I'm trying to show you separation and swiftness of separation from good and evil. Swiftness from separation. Do you know we are to be changed? When God does something, he does it quickly. We might not know everything. We might not have gone through the entire change because we're still learning, we're still getting stronger spiritually, but when God saves, he does it swiftly. When I find salvation, I find it right now. I don't have to 
to wait in line like I wait at the DMV for them to get my car tag and redo my license. But you go to God and swiftly he takes away your sins. He passes over. Hallelujah. He passes over. Matthew 16, 17 through 19. Hallelujah. Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now I got up and came to church this morning, and there was four ways blocked at the stop sign. Four ways blocked and about four large trucks from one of the electric companies and a big old pole with a crack in it that only a car or God could have done. Amen. And, and they was taking the pole out. I think there was two of them. A car took out. And the first thing on my mind, I started getting a little bit weak like Peter when he was walking on water. I said, oh no, what we going to do? We ain't got no power in the church. But immediately, the Spirit of God got in me and said, well, we can sing a cappella and I can preach without a microphone. I might not have a voice tomorrow, but God will cover me. Amen? Amen. But I start getting a little weak. I said, oh, now how come they got to hit our, our church power? Amen, Brother Dwayne. How come they couldn't get it on the Catholic? Now look at that anyway. And the Jehovah Witness said, how come they couldn't hit their pole? So I talked to the man out there. And I said, they're going to be working on this all day. I already know it. Well, they've gone before church started. Isn't God good? And I talked to the man. I said, is there power to the church? He said, there's power to the church. It's just the telephone poles. I said, thank God. Isn't God good? Because, you know, sometime, one time, a drunk driver went halfway down that street, went up the sidewalk, took out the fire hydrant, came across the church, scraped the corner, and went to the parking lot until he lost all power. A drunk driver did that. And, and I'm, I'm thinking, God, you have protected us. You have protected us and covered us on this corner. Hallelujah. God is good. So upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. And I will give unto thee the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, thou shalt, uh, shalt be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him in verse 22. So he was actually praising Peter, giving him some credit. And then a few scriptures later, Peter started to rebuke Jesus. He started to speak against what God said. So God called Peter Satan. He didn't mean he was actually Satan, but he had the spirit of the devil in him. It's amazing that on one day our faith is high and we want to serve God. And on another day, can you believe what came out of your mouth? Hallelujah. But I'm so glad God got us. And he promised never to leave me nor to forsake me. Uh, thank God he gave me faith today. And when I get a little bit weak tomorrow, he can say, get that spirit out of you. I haven't given you the spirit of fear. But everybody say it with me. I got the spirit of power, of love, of sound mind. Say it again. The spirit I got is from Jesus and it's of power. It's of love and a sound mind. And Jesus is there to rebuke that other spirit that might rise up in me. Hallelujah. Peter tried to rebuke God. But he said, be it far from thee, God. You, you, this shall not be unto thee. He turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Thou art offense, for thou savorest not the things be of God, but those that of man. Hallelujah. Get behind me, Satan. Flee from me. Hallelujah. I'm running to Jesus, and, and you can't run with me. You've got to go the other direction, because light and darkness cannot mix. Get away from me. In the name of Jesus, I got the power. Of his resurrection in me. I've been dead before. I've been lost before. But God revived me. 
because he died just so that I can have abundant life, abundant life, and more abundantly. Get away from me, Satan. I, I'll run away from you if it's ordained, but I'm not scared of the devil. You are under my feet. The devil is under, I think this is why you're sitting there right now. Stop your feet and say, stay under my feet, devil. Get under my feet and stay under my feet. We have to put the devil in his right place. And you can't do that if God is not in his direct and correct place geographically in your life. If you put God first, everything else is last. And evil has to be under your feet. So the first Passover, I got to move quick. The first Passover, Exodus 12, the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year. Speak ye unto the congregation, saying, In the tenth day of the month, they shall take to them every man a lamb. Say a lamb. A lamb according to the house of of their fathers, a lamb, hallelujah, maybe that'll work today, uh, a lamb, it says, speak to the congregation, now verse 5 says, your lamb shall be without blemish, without blemish, a male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, hallelujah, and Ye shall keep it up until the 14th day. Does that sound familiar to you? The 14th day uh, of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Hallelujah. They shall take the blood and strike it on the two sides of the post and the upper door, the post of the house, like I said. But look, 8 says they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Hallelujah. Verse 10 of Exodus 12 says this, And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Eat it all. And that which remain of it until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Wonder if I can slow down a little bit. You can turn to Exodus 12 and 11 with me and read that with me. Hallelujah. Read it with me. Read it with me. Exodus 12 and 11. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. In, in haste, swiftly, quickly. It is the Lord's Passover. Somebody said it's the Lord's Passover. Hallelujah. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Hallelujah. So the lamb, how come they took little innocent lamb, uh, that, that one of the ones that David heard it, now it's a different time, but they took a little innocent sheep and they were to kill it, eat it, and use the blood for protection and covering. Do you hear what I'm saying? Jesus wanted to eat the Passover during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He wanted to partake in the Passover with his disciples. This was centuries in the making. They've been doing this because God told Moses after they came out of Egypt to continue the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, unleavened is without yeast. Because it, it takes a while for it to rise up. Have you been in the kitchen when your mom was cooking cake, baking cake? And she said, stop that running and because you're going to mess up the cake. Now, I'm just now thinking, I'm sure she was right. But I'd like to do a scientific experiment and see if it really 
makes the cake. Does it really do it? Cook? All right. Thank God for First Lady. I'm a, I got to see with my eyes, Dalton Thomas. I want to see it happen, you know, uh, because they say when they say don't do things as a little kid, you just trust mom and dad with all your heart, soul, and mind, don't you? And uh, so they said don't cook with lemon. You don't have time for the bread to rise up and make it pretty and tasteful. Cook with unleavened bread. Listen, God will design and order a feast to order a tradition based upon what he done in your life. Just because of that occurrence, they kept the tradition. And my message to you today is you don't have time to wait and explain to the devil or to your friend why you serve God. If you don't want to come to church, you're going to miss out. I don't have time to get my house in order before I get saved. But God will put my house in order if I put him first. You don't have time. No man knows the day or the hour. You don't have time to get it right. You can't get it right. But resist the devil and he shall flee. You got to get out of Egypt. Somebody's in Egypt in their life. Somebody's in the wilderness and you are searching around for something and you won't be able to get it together until you resist. Run swiftly. Get out of there. You're not supposed to be in that house. Get out of there. You're not supposed to be on that website. Get out of there. You're not supposed to be on that corner. You're not supposed to be in that bar. Get out of there. They've held you. The devil has held you in captive for far too long. But God wants to pass you over while everybody else is receiving judgment. We're in Daniel right now finding salvation. The book of Daniel. Daniel means judgment. Judgment is, go, is coming on the earth. But judgment begins in the house of God. But while God is, uh, and you know, they think they got it all figured out. If we write this law, if we do this, if we do that, then we'll make it better for us. And forget about those Christians. But I, I'm telling you, God is judging mankind. And when you walk away from the light, the Bible says in John 3 that you bring judgment on yourself because you hate the light. But we don't have time to rationalize with evil. We don't have time to rationalize with a confused mind. Hallelujah. Just present your body a living sacrifice. Just run boldly to the throne of grace. There is mercy here. Obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. While I take a quick pause, I wonder if five people not for me and but for God and you can jump to your feet and say, I'm going to run swiftly and boldly that I might be passed over. I'm going to run because God protects me that ain't no devil in hell. Hallelujah. Can get me, can block me. I'm going to swiftly allow God to pass me over because when he's blessing you, he won't pass you over. He won't Jehovah when he blesses you, when he brings you in grief, when he gives you his spirit and his Holy Ghost, like on the day of Pentecost, he won't pass you over. Hallelujah. You may be seated and I got a few more uh, tens and tens of minutes. Amen. Amen. But why sheep meat? Why sheep meat? Let's look at some lamb. And now lately, I don't know why Maybe it's the spirit of the Lord that told my wife, uh, but she's been cooking some lamb chops, chops every, every now and then for the last couple months, and uh, they're kind of tasty. I kind of, I kind of like them. Amen. Uh, this lamb, this lamb, sheep, sheep. What's the difference between lamb and mutton? Mutton, I believe, Hallelujah, is uh, the part of the sheep. Uh, I think it's the aged part of the sheep. Hallelujah. And the lamb is the younger part. And I think that's mutton right there. And there go, no, that's mutton right there. You, you see it look different. And anybody that knows sheep that came up on a farm, 
I don't want to prolong just to get it right. Am I saying that right? The mutton is the older uh, sheep. And the meat look a little bit different. Does that look tasty or does that look gross? Well, you're looking at what they cooked and then use the blood, the byproduct from on the Feast of the Passover in Exodus and throughout their time and when Jesus was about to go to Calvary, to Gargotho Hill, he wanted to partake in the Feast of the Passover. In fact, we take communion now and we break the bread and we drink the wine, which is the blood and the body broken for him, which was included in the Last Supper. Amen. Uh, but sheep is one of the most common meats around the world, taken from the domestic sheep, Ovis Aries, and generally divided into lamb from sheep in their first year, hogget from sheep in their second year, and mutton is the older sheep. I knew it was there. Hallelujah. Now, in some parts of the world, mutton and lamb refer to the meat that comes from sheep. And the only difference is the age. Is the age I was working at AT and T over 20 years ago, I think, maybe over 16, 17 years ago, and I met a girl named Becky. Becky is uh, from Centralia, Missouri. I guess I'm telling all your business, Becky. Amen. But if somebody knows who you are and that's listening on YouTube or Facebook, but Becky said, "Have you ever heard of mutton busting?" I said, "What in the world?" We all laughed, and uh, we said, "What in the world is a mutton bust? Don't even sound right." And does anybody, anybody heard of mutton busting? Nobody in here. I get to tell y'all. I get to uh, give you all some uh, information. Then mutton busting. So now I know mutton is the older lamb. What they would do in Centralia is one of the capitals of mutton busting, or if not the only place where they mutton bust. What they do is they take the older sheep and they lay on it. They don't ride it. They lay prostrate on it, on their stomach, and they race while they're laying on their stomach. It's called mutton bus, and they have a great fair built around it. And I said, that's amazing. And, uh, it's amazing how we use different things for different purposes, right? Different purposes for different things. But the Passover dealt with the sheep. I, I bet God probably wanted a young sheep. If I can remember in my studies, I think he wanted the sheep that was younger in age, the good meat, tender, without blemish, without any marks that doesn't look bad. And he wanted that to be the sacrifice. He wants the best in your life. When you present your body a living sacrifice, when you bring your sacrifice of praise, it ain't just me looking up here crazy praising the Lord, but he wants our best, hallelujah. Matter of fact, we should start to turn. Yeah, I really don't like how they, they put the camera on people shouting and especially speaking in tongues. And then they put it on YouTube and they put it on what's that other one? That, 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 that TikTok and, and, and the church people are some of the main people that make fun of people dancing and praising the Lord. Amen. But this is your sacrifice of praise and it's a place where the devil can't get in. It's a place where the devil doesn't understand. Uh, sickness and wickedness doesn't understand the sacrifice of praise. Bring your sacrifice of praise your best without blemish. Lay aside every weight and the sin that easily besets you. Lay it aside. Stop feeling guilty. Bring God your present. Sacrifice your best meat. Your best praise into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now nobody's perfect, but God can make your praise offering. And you can say, please accept my praise. Please accept my worship. I ain't got a lamb. I ain't got a but please accept my contrite heart, Lord Jesus. Now, in John 10 and 27, the book said, Jesus said, my sheep, somebody said, my sheep, my sheep, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. If you are a disciple, I told you, a disciple is a learner. A learner follows, doesn't just keep ever learning and not understanding, but a, a, a disciple keeps learning, keeps following him because you hear his voice. Now the devil spoke to you and you knew it 
wasn't good for you. Somebody spoke love to you and your ear wasn't trained enough and, and they got over on you. But God has trained your ear. If you are his sheep, you shall hear his voice. And I thank God that we are live. Let me get the dead sheep off of there. We're live sheep. You got, they know you're glad that you can hear the voice of Jesus. The Bible says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And the Bible says you can't hear without a preacher. The preacher has to be sent out. Beautiful are the feet of them that sit here. I thank God for my ears that I can hear things are going to be better, that I'm going to increase in word. I can hear the voice of the Lord and say, pass me not, Lord. Let the sins pass over. Let my sins go on before me. Let me get away from the devil and pass over all of the judgment because I serve you. That's what supplication, prayer, and supplication is all about. You cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, keep passing over me. Lord, hallelujah, block the, the, the snares of the devil and block, hallelujah, the, the, the plan of the enemy, hallelujah. Pass me over, Lord. I'm your sheep. I hear your voice. Does somebody hear God's voice? It's been a short year, but a long year. Has anyone heard God's voice this year? And God has ordered your steps and say, go and know that I sent you. Go in the name of Jesus. Brother James heard the voice of the Lord. My son over there, James the fourth, and he took a trip to Ecuador. And the man said that the prisoners broke out and there's great trouble in the land. And me and Roberta said, oh, no, you don't need to go to Ecuador. But he says, I'm going to go and God's going to protect me while I'm witnessing and taking clean water to people. Go and know that the Lord sent you in Isaiah. Uh, he just came back from Florida while they were spring breaking. He was uh, spring praying and giving the gospel to people. Go and know he sent you. Have you heard the voice of the Lord? You're here because God has called you. You're here because God speaks to you late in the midnight hour. And like the song said, God's going to turn it around for you. I got him out of the grave to fix things for you. I got him out of the grave to protect you. I died to block you from your sins that they can be passed over. This is what, what running boldly before the throne of grace is about coming to the throne of grace is to obtain mercies that your sins, hallelujah, can pass you over. The judgment, the only judgment that you have to worry about is, is the God that can take a spirit out and, and that can uh, uh, that can hold a spirit in his hands. Man, the Bible says, do not fear man, the one that can hurt you physically, but only fear God. And the only thing you have to worry about is your own sins. Uh huh. Your sin can't take me to heaven, hell. I'm not gonna let it. Amen. I've got to be accountable for my own decisions. And if you make a decision and you're scared that you just might not make it, I'm here to tell you. Realize that you hold the difference in your hand if you decide to give your will to Jesus. Hallelujah. Only thing can keep you from Him is you. It's you. It's you. I won't keep myself stagnant. I won't keep myself out of the pearly gates. But I will make it because I'm his sheep. And I'm going to hear the voice of the Lord. Does anybody hear the voice of the Lord this morning? Say, I'm his sheep. And I look a little bit better than that. But I'm still his sheep. Because he is the potter. And I'm the clay. Mold me, Lord. Keep me from running away. Keep me from the foot of the wolves. Keep me from the snare of the fowler. Protect me, Lord. I'm his sheep. Now, real quickly, the last Passover lamb. Revelation 13, 7 says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. 
and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus already said that you his friends. He said that you we servants like he's a servant, but you his friend. Hallelujah. You know the apostles are going to be judging the 12 uh, the, the, the 12 tribes and, and you know in Revelations we're going to be sitting up there with God hallelujah we're not equal with God but we get to reign with him forever and the Bible calls him a lamb a lamb of God hallelujah slain from the foundation of the world hallelujah God went through what he went through in flesh because it was written. And he told Peter, get behind me, Satan. I have an important job just to help you out. It's amazing that even Peter was trying to block his blessing. We'll try to block the blessings and the salvation of the Lord. But speak to the devil. Speak to your flesh that is enmity toward God. And say, you can't keep me from the love of God. You can't keep me from the love of God's self. Get out of your own way. Hallelujah. So, uh, he's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus created the heaven and the earth. And even before he did it uh, from the foundation, he knew it was going to take some blood. He knew it was, it was going to take some death uh, because we need a savior. Somebody throw up your hands and say, I need you, Lord. I need a savior. I need the old. I need just a few more minutes and I'll let you go home and eat lamb and turkey and whatever you want to eat. But you better take the word with you. You better eat the meat of God. That's what's going to sustain you. In Luke 21, Jesus said, man's heart's failing them for fear and for looking after these things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Don't you want to see that blessed day of God, the Son of Man, coming in a cloud with power and great glory? And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws. Nah, hallelujah. When you see the coming of the Lamb, lift up your heads. Your Redeemer liveth. And God is not dead, but He's yet alive. We celebrate on this Sunday because my Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Uncle Sam gave me a little money for income tax, but that money's gone already. So and so loved you, but they moved away. Somebody gave you grace when you messed up, and then they decided to judge you anyway and start rumors about you. But Jesus lives. Your Redeemer lives. Your Redeemer will never let you down. Your Redeemer will never leave you or forsake you. Your Redeemer shed blood for you. And he was without spot. He was without blemish. Your Redeemer, there was no doubt found in his mouth. But they drew the nails in his hands. They put the crown of thorns on him. Hallelujah. And out of his side came blood and water. And he yelled, uttered those last seven sayings. Hallelujah. But one of them was, it is finished. It's finished. It doesn't mean when God said it's finished that it's over for his life. But the Redeemer liveth. Hallelujah. That should mean they know you walk in the valley. Hallelujah. And the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Hallelujah. Mary, Mary, and the other lady. On the day of Sunday morning, when Sunday came, 
they looked at the stone. The stone was rolled away by a large angel. And I looked at it differently, saints. I said, they looked at the stone. They looked at where Jesus was buried, the cave. And they entered in. I said, I've never seen it like that before. They actually walked in the place where Jesus, now I'd be too scared to walk in and say, I'm not going in there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out. I don't know what's going to happen if a God was in there and a God came out. I don't have no business in there. But with boldness, they walked in the place where Jesus was. And they did not find his body. And the angel said, I told he's gone. They started to tell the disciples. The disciples all looked like Dap and Thomas that day. Even Peter was confused. Peter said, I just don't know what's going on. But I, they say he's not there. I don't know whether to believe it or not. God has told you he's going to perform a work in you. God has told you and given you talents and gifts to use for his kingdom. Don't second guess it. Don't be confused. The Holy Ghost is real. Your specific gift and talent that he gave you to use for the kingdom is real. Don't be confused. Hallelujah. Just walk after the spirit. And you don't have to worry about the lust of the flesh. But I'm so glad before he got up out of the grave. They knew they messed up. When he died, there was a veil in the temple. The veil was about four inches or more thick. As soon as he died, the veil rented in two pieces. And nobody had a knife. But God broke that veil so that we can receive him. And we can receive his Holy Ghost. And that we don't have to wait for the priest to go into the Holy of Holies. Enter into the Holy of Holies. That's where I want to be when he died. The sun, it was about 12 o'clock, I think, in the daytime. From 12 to about 3, the 6th to the ninth hour, the sun went dark. When he died, the sun went dark. When he died, the saints of God that worshiped that, that served him, that was in the grave, many of them got up out of the grave and they start walking the streets. And there was more witnesses to see them walking. When God dies, there's power that happens even on a physical earth. When God dies, the earth has to answer. When God dies, if your sheep, you a sheep, you hear his voice, the earth moves upon God dying. And the Bible says the rocks was rent. They were split in two when he died. I'm so glad that God will move heaven and earth just to save a wretch like me. When he died, some things happened. The centurion, he healed the centurion's daughter. And he said, we, that must be the son of God. They knew they messed up. Some of them already knew he was God. It's amazing that he, some people believe more than the saints of God. But the witness was there. I'm here to tell you, you are a witness to what God has done. When he died, it was just a precursor for him to get up out of the grave and raise again. God got up out of the grave and he walked the earth for 40 days. He said, go on to Jerusalem. In 10 more days, I'm going to send you my comforter. Your comforter is not just going to make you feel better. It's going to endow you. He said he's going to endow them with power from on high. Now, the sermon has to be over. Because I can preach all day about God rising from the dead. But is there anybody here that wants to rise above their earthly treasures? That wants their life resurrected? He didn't go through the excruciating pain and the three-day burial just for you to be normal. But I'm more than normal. I'm supernatural. Because I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. If you can do all things, he's going to protect you. You can speak to yourself and say, there ain't no weapon formed against me. 
hallelujah, that shall prosper. Jesus got up out of that grave and he held all power in his hands. Oh, you're messing with a God. You're trying to kill a God that's, that's trying to save the world. Get out of God's way. Let him save your life. Get out of God's way. Let him save the world. Get out of God's way. Let him bring you out of darkness into this marvelous life. I'm going to get out of my God's way because what he can do, I can't do. I'm going to get out of God's way. What he has for you, you don't have for yourself. What God has for you ain't in your bank account. It's not in your mind. Hallelujah. But you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew my mind, Lord. Like you renewed your body. And it was a changed body. Renew my mind, Lord. And I wonder if there's about 20 people in here that's going to just say hallelujah. Renew my mind, Lord. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. What God has for me is for me. What God has for me is for me. I know without a doubt that God will bring me out. If you believe God got up out of the grave with all power just for you, I dare you to jump to one foot and say, Hallelujah. I need some praise partners with me. I didn't come to church all by myself, but I came to this house to praise the Lord. God went in the temple, coming down Jerusalem on that donkey, on that animal. He went right to the temple, and he said, this shall be a house of prayer. I got some business to do in the temple. Give somebody a high five and say, I got some business to do right now. I came to look pretty. I came for an Easter egg hunt. But forget all that, girl. I got some prayer to do right now. Jump to your visa. Close your eyes and say, hallelujah. God's been good to me. Say, thank you, Jesus. Like you was in sweatsuit right now. Say thank you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Jesus. Pass over my sins. Pass over my sins. Don't let the yeast in my life overcome me. Don't let the yeast in my life rise up against me. Pass over me, Lord. Cast your cares on him. Somebody just cast right now. Pass over me, Lord. Pass over. Pass over. Pass over. Pass over. Pass over. Pass over. Block me from myself. Block kill me from myself. We're praying about sickness. And we're praying about infirmities. But Lord, heal me from myself. Heal me from my own apathy. Heal me from my own weakness. I got the spirit of power.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here? Love my Jesus. Is there anybody here? Love my Lord. Is there anybody here? Love my Jesus. I want to know. Do you love my Lord? Is there anybody here? Love my Jesus. Anybody here? Love my Lord. I wanna know. Do you love my Jesus? I wanna know. Do you love my Lord? Is there anybody here that needs prayer this morning? Let me rephrase that. There's somebody here that needs the all I need. There's somebody here that needs his Passover, Passover blood. You only get that when you receive his blood name. When you receive his family name. He said, I come in my father's name. I am my father or one. Thank you, thank you. Is there anybody in here that need? You may be baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. You may have been speaking in tongues, but you need the blood covering, the name of Jesus this morning. He died just to give you more life. Hallelujah. We call him Jesus. We call him Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I am that I am. I'm, I'm Yahweh. Him saving you is Yahshua, which is Jesus. You need the blood covering of Yahshua. You need the name. Mary can't save you. Mary went to look to see if he, she was in, he was in the temple. Mary can't save you. Joseph, none of the Josephs can save you. But only his blood name. Gabriel can't do it. He can just show you God's traces, God's production. But only God can save you. Yeshua, I come to you. Come on down right now if you need more strength. Come on now, you want to be dead baptized on Easter Sunday. Hallelujah. Come down for the protection and the covering that only God can give you. You don't have to be lost. You don't have to be lost. There's room at the cross to you. There is room at the cross. There is room at the cross for you. Hallelujah. There is room at the cross for you. Millions have come. Millions have come. There's still room for one. There is room at the cross for you. Thank you. 
think I gave you direction this morning and we got it mixed up. So we put the teenagers and the adults in one class today. Amen. God is good. Uh, Wednesday night we'll have Bible study at 7 o'clock. Amen. And God is bringing us a great word. Elder Hughes said I couldn't make it. I was out of town. And Elder Hughes said I, I went to turn everything off and I came back in the room minutes later. And I thought they'd be gone. They're in there still fellowshipping and talking about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. We got some people in here that want to be here. Amen. And God showed me we need to grow and increase and duplicate the positive and the good people that we have. Amen. And I, I'm just I'm going to say it. Uh, maybe God got rid of most of the bad people. <laughs> But you realistically let the weeds and the tears grow up together. But you here, just about all of you, all of you are the ones that God wants to reproduce. I want three, four Patrices this year. I want four or five Jameses. I want more Alanas. God gave her the Holy Ghost and, and, and baptized her and filled her with the Holy Ghost. And Jenny, just less than a year ago. Isn't God good? And they beat some of y'all to anyway. anyway amen. Don't let the new people outserve you. But don't be getting no competition, no jealousy. But we gotta reproduce. I know we all work jobs and stuff. I can't always make it to everything. So I thank God for you and you uh, being a vessel of praise and an instrument of praise when you can. Amen. I'm 50 now. I can't do everything. But uh, so uh, I love everybody. Reproduce, ask God to reproduce the spirit in you. Amen. Reproduce your kindness, your love. Reproduce that God is love. God is love. Good to see you, Fabian. Love you, man. Yes. You're gonna bring your brother in here too. No knucklehead. <laughs> Cute. Amen. Tell him I love him. Let's stand to our feet and be dismissed at this time. God, thank you all for coming out for Easter. Keep praying for Bishop. Keep praying for the McCallans. Uh, that had most of that family couldn't make it. And we thank God, Sister Denise is better. Hallelujah. God's a healer. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Some people just couldn't make it today. And, and if you're sick, you can stay home. And I'll come here, wear a mask, and get some healing. Amen. God's good. Good to see you all. Let's, let's be dismissed and ask God to resurrect the witnessing uh, mind. All right? Resurrect the boldness in us. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this great resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Lord, you're holy. Be holy for I am holy. Help keep us keep us from falling. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless from the presence of your glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior dominion and power both now and forever. Help us take this word, take this worship and use it to make a difference that they, people know the last lamb slain is Jesus and you live in Jesus name shake hands and be friendly my God is risen hallelujah